Hi, this is Mark from SM Postcards again with another video on reselling postcards in our eBay, Etsy, and HIP postcard stores. Today I'm going to go over what people purchase from our eBay and HIP stores. I didn't sell any cards on Etsy for this video, so I just got eBay and HIP. I got some larger orders, like six cards uh, orders on eBay and a six card order on HIP to show you what the people purchased and how they search uh, and gather the cards up while they're browsing your store. I also have a special topic on a special postcard called bookmark postcards or otherwise known as panel cards. And then I have another uh, term or definition, franking. What is the, what's that mean? And then I'll go over a couple of viewer comments that came in on the other videos that I thought would be interesting uh, to discuss. Let me go ahead and show you what cards were purchased on eBay. I'm going to do eBay first. Now remember when I show you this card, I'm just going to show you the front, the back, a little bit about the card if I know anything. And what you really want to look at as I go through this during the video here and there is what the variety of the people are buying. So when you're out looking for postcards at the antique malls or flea markets, you get a good idea on what people are searching for. And if you watch our other videos that we have in our channel, you start to see kind of a, a rhythm, uh, something in common about the cards. What I've noticed most is they buy everything. <laughs> if you think they're not going to buy it, they'll buy it. So uh, the first card that sold, it's a larger order. It's about six cards on an eight, one person. This is the Willow Run Airport and the General Motors plan all in one shot. On there it's a chrome card unposted it's on a lighter stock but that's one of the cards from that gentleman purchased the next card is the coach room hotel restaurant so he bought an he bought an airport and then he bought the coach room restaurant and this is the king's room and this is in bedford pennsylvania so it's just a picture of the dining room there it's an unposted chrome card the next one with this same order is Mary's Restaurant in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So that's another inside of the restaurant. This is probably dated to the 60s in there in the 70s just by looking at that. Uh, the booths and the chairs in there. So unposted Chrome card. So we have an airport and two restaurants. Then he gets in and he orders the Stouffer Restaurant Chrome card. So this is another restaurant, an airport and three restaurant cards on the order. And this is actually in Detroit, Michigan, in the Eastland Shopping Center. And it shows the shopping center and the restaurant in two of the dining rooms. And that's an unposted Chrome card. The next one on this order is Arnold's Hoffenbrau Restaurant in Washington, D.C. And that shows a row, row of tables with the checkered tablecloth all set up for lunch or dinner. And that's also an unposted Chrome card. So with this order so far, you're seeing the same thing through it. He got an airport, but he got all these restaurants. So this guy's probably a collector of restaurants. But then you get into the last card of the order. And what is it? Hickory Municipal Airport in Hickory, North Carolina. So he started with an airport, four restaurant cards, and then ended with an airport. So he actually searched through the store on eBay probably, going through your pictures, your scans or whatever, and put them in his cart, which cards he wanted. But this is a nice air view of the airport there, and it, that's also a Chrome card. So out of six cards, two airports, four restaurants, all unposted Chrome cards. So now let me get into the special topic and then I'll go over after that I'll go over some of the other cards that, that were sold but what is a bookmark postcard you're saying? I've never heard of those. I haven't heard a lot of these cards that I bring up on these videos uh, but they're from my collection that I have. So I'll put it down here what a bookmark postcard is. It's a novelty postcard that was manufactured for use as a bookmark. And I'll show you, I got four examples of them, uh, what they are. And a bookmark is just a long 
cardboard stock, you know, card stock that you put into the book where you're reading. So a novelty postcard was manufactured to use as a bookmark rather than mailing, even though it could be mailed. I'm not for sure about nowadays. Uh, I think there's a regulation on what you can do. But as you notice, these cards, I don't know if they go through the machines for a while and they'd probably be unmachinable. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. I just n never look into mailing bookmark postcards. They were mostly printed in England between 1903 and 1904. So we're talking about earlier cards here, with some printed in Canada about 1910. The most common size is five and a quarter by one and three inches. So they're going to be long and skinny. And these are also referred to as panel cards. So when you hear bookmark postcards or panel cards, that's what these are. Now the typical prices that I see for these novelty type of cards is from five to twenty dollars. Now there's also RPPCs of um, that are made in the bookmark postcards that they use, but it all really depends on the condition, the subject, the age, etc. So they're not the real high end cards, but they are a novelty that people look for. So bookmark postcards. So the examples I got here. So the examples I got. So the first one is kind of a just a picture of a boat by a waterfall in Broadheads Creek, Delaware Water Gap. So that's the bookmark, but it, the picture actually goes this way. But you would put that in a book, and that's a bookmark. Now on the back, you notice it's got the divided back line in there. So your stamp would go over here uh, with your address and then your message over here. And if you notice, it leaves more room for the address, so it's probably an earlier card. But that's the first card I got as a bookmark, and people would use those. The next one I got is actually an RPPC, and it's um, a Cairo. It's a foreign card right there. So it just shows a picture of a downtown street in Cairo. Same thing on the back, it has the divided back thing, uh, stamp on one side, address on another, but that's another bookmark postcard or panel card. The next one I have, and if you notice, these are basically international cards as well as this one. This looks like uh, maybe France or something like that. It doesn't say where it's at, but it does. It's a lot skinnier than the other ones, as you can tell. So that's a different size to the other ones. But it's a lady with a parasol umbrella type walking down some staircases. Now on the back, it basically has the lines for the address and then where you would put the stamp on there with the divided back line. But that's the other one I have. And the last example I have to show you is another international card. It's basically the same type of style. It's Venice. It's of statues in there. And both of these cards are of the same width as the other one. So, but it shows the statues in there. And on the back it also has the lines and the divided back line where you put the stamp and the address. But all of these are what they call bookmark postcards or panel cards. And if you notice, they come in little different sizes through there, RPPC, and different things, but you're, they're mostly going to be international if you see them. Now, there is current, present ones made uh, for novelty type stuff that you'll find them made of a plastic like acrylic uh, thing that they sell at souvenir stands and stuff going there, but these are the original uh, bookmark panel cards. Bookmark postcards. Who knew? So the next uh, order we had on eBay was just for a single card, and this is R Rhododendron and Mount Laurel in the in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. It's a linen card. Now sometimes people at the flea markets or whoever uh, got the card originally will sometimes pencil in a date here. You might want to take that as a grain of salt sometimes. Um, 
but most of the time it'll give you an idea like this is a linen card 1947 is what that person wrote on there it said May 1947 I would say that this is probably a 1940s card and it's just linen unposted in there but always be careful um, if someone wrote a date on there it might not be the original card date but that's a nice linen card all the that all these cards sold between four and five dollars the next order on eBay was Tacoma Indian to totem pole tallest in the world Tacoma Washington so this is the tallest totem pole the other day I sold a rock the other day I sold a bush a mountain now I sold the tallest totem pole it is uh, written on uh, it is not posted but it is written on and they wrote in every space they could even in the address field so I, this was never mailed but this is a white border card and this sold between four and five dollars but as you said I've sold mountains museums lodges motels totem poles is now added to the list okay and with every video I always try to put a term the term or definition from postcard terminology one of the best things you can do to learn about postcards is understand the words, the definitions that's used on describing postcards so you can talk to talk, speak to speak, the whole works, or understand the value of the cards. When I say Chrome, everybody thinks cheap cards. When I say RPPCs, people, first thing in people's mind is, hey, that might be more value. Not really. Sometimes a Chrome could be more, worth more. But if you learn the terminology and what the card is, does it have a scalloped edge? You know, is it a linen card, white border, uh, different things. And then you're going to get to see what subjects sell and what's worth more uh, type things. The term I got today was one I uh, pulled out and it's called franking. What is franking? I'll put it down here. Franking is the ability to send mail through a postal system free of postage. So free. Usually reserved for the military personnel who are allowed to send mail for free during wartime. And to congressmen who can send free literature out to their constituents. All the stuff we always want to get in our mailbox. A letter or postcard sent in this way is re referred to as franked mail or free mail. So if you're military or war, you can send stuff back and forth back in the day. In the mail nowadays, they probably use email and social media and, you know, web chats type thing. But back in the day, it was frank mail, free mail. Now, my wife does brailing. She'll take uh, written words and put it into braille for the vision impaired. And when one novel could be you know, five big books or even more, two boxes of uh, printed braille, the little dots that the vision impaired people read. When you take a regular book, it can be really tall. Well, she brings that to the post office and they stamp it with, for the blind, anything for the blind is shipped free by the post office. So you could call that frank mail too, free mail. So franking, who knew? Now, when you start selling postcards, one of the things you'll see, you'll see people buy a postcard and they might not pay for it right away. A lot of people want immediate payment. They, they think that people bought it, they shouldn't wait to pay. I found with postcards, I just let them sit because the guy will probably come back and buy some more cards or they're buying another one. Then they pay for them all at once. So don't be afraid if you're selling postcards that someone didn't pay for something. Usually if I see one sit there a week, week and a half, I might send a message to say, hey, did you still want this postcard? They might have forgot. Um, I don't have automatic cases opened up on the stores on eBay. Um, I just deal with each situation. But most of the time, the people are shopping. Or they forgot, is what I found. Um, I had one the other day, a guy, you know, had a bunch of cards and stuff. He didn't pay for them. I just let it sit. Next thing you know, five days later, it was all paid for, and it was like a 12-card order. So immediate payment for postcards I found. I don't have it in my toy store either. Everything is, you know, just pay for it whenever. A lot of people will go through and put cards in their 
uh, cart as well. We can't see that, but they'll put them in their cart and then pay for it once. Today I had, and I do get orders of five, six, ten cards at once, uh, etc. and stuff like that, or I get two cards or three cards. But I would say a majority of our sales is single cards to a single person. It's probably the most prevalent. And the next one is two or three cards. But like this, these order today, I had a six card order on eBay, and then now I got a six card order on HIP. Now, if you're using HIP uh, postcards, it's automatic sync from eBay to HIP. If you're using that, HIP postcards uses PayPal. And with this order here, I noticed when it came in, and it came in like two days ago, but it said payment pending in red. So you always want to look at your payment page and shipping page to make sure that people are paid. And it says refer to PayPal. So I went over to PayPal and I looked at it and it said pending. So I, I waited a day and then I sent uh, the gentleman a message and said, hey, we'll mail out your cards once your payment clears. Right now it currently says uh, pending in PayPal. He replied back that, oh, I probably need to update the credit card. So he went into PayPal and updated his credit card and today it shows uh, cleared. So I'm going to go ahead and ship, it out, ship them out to him. Am I worried about a six card order? No. Uh, but you always want to make sure, like in HIP postcards, to check and make sure your payment's cleared. eBay will put them in the shipping thing when everything's cleared, but what I found with HIP, it'll say refer to PayPal uh, on there. So with the six card order, uh, there, this one's a little different than the, the airport and the restaurant one, but this gentleman has Hollywood by the Sea in Florida, as you'll see. So the first card that he bought was a chrome card, Hello from Hollywood, Florida. And it's basically a beach scene with some hotels in the background. And it's a posted card, and this was posted in, in the 1970s, and it's got an eight cent stamp on it. So for my other video, I should, I even with the postmark and the stamp, I could probably get this down to the year or close to it. But it's basically a chrome card. Now these cards are pretty popular. I I get a lot of them and I sell a lot of them and I call them map cards. So they're basically a picture of a map with certain points of interest on them and this is of Florida. So I call them map cards and that's an unposted uh, card, chrome card. But when you see these cards you know they're going to sell four to five dollars. They might be a little long tail but if you get a lot of the different states people browsing through they might pick up a Florida card and a map card. They're just cool cards. I thought to get, uh, I always look for those when I'm going through the boxes. <clears throat> this is another Hollywood by the Sea, Florida. This is an air view uh, picture of Hollywood by the Sea with the ocean and the intercoastal there, and it's an unposted chrome card. The next card this gentleman bought from the six card order on HIP uh, Wish You Were Here in Hollywood. Another one, Hollywood Beach, uh, on there. So this looks like a white border card, but it's a chrome card. And you'll see how it shines. See how it shines in there? And this was uh, postmarked 1965. So you want to be careful on, even though it looks like a white border, it's not. It, it's a chrome card of the Hollywood uh, Florida and it's got all the little piers along here and nicely done on there but that's uh, been posted it's got a four cent stamp on it next one on this order was the front lawn of a Hollywood Beach Hotel Hotel Holly, Hollywood Beach Hotel Hollywood Florida and this is a linen card posted in 1945 and it just shows the front lawn I could go out and take a picture of my house on the front lawn. I wonder if I could sell a postcard. But what people buy, maybe he's been there. He, but if you notice on this one, he's consistent with everything from Hollywood, Florida. So uh, he did a search in there and he found everything Hollywood, Florida. And my store popped up. Then this is the last one of this order. It's kind of the same view as the other one, but I've blown in a little bit. It's Hollywood by the Sea, Florida. 
So this is an air view, they call it, and right up here it says air view. I always try to put air view, bird's eye view, put that into the listing title as people look at it. And this has an eight cents stamp on it, 1970 postmark, so I could probably get this down there, but this is a 70s card on there. But if you notice with this order, there was a couple linens and their chrome cards posted and unposted, but they had the same thing was Hollywood by the Sea. So next time I go looking through boxes at a flea market or whatever, if I see Hollywood by the Sea and they're a good price, would I pick them up? Absolutely. Would I pick airports up? Absolutely. Restaurants? Absolutely. That's what these, uh, showing you what sold or what people purchased vid part of the videos do, it gives you an idea so you're not walking in blind. I know when I walk into flea markets or an antique store, I don't do antiques. I, I just don't see the value. I don't have that eye. My wife does and my father-in-law does. I just don't know that stuff and I don't even try to. Um, but if you point me toward a toy or you put me to the postcards, I feel comfortable. And how I got there was looking in other people's stores that sold, putting every card up I could to see what sells, and what you guys can do, and I'm hoping I'm bringing to you in these videos, is you can go look at the videos and you can get a good idea what to look for so you feel comfortable looking through a box of cards. So those are all the orders that I had for today. But now let's get into the viewer comments. So I, I picked out three comments, and where these are in our videos, we have different sections in the videos on YouTube. One of them is the description. And for every video I have a description and I have uh, some things down in there, uh, you know, what financial software I use, the different sleeves, uh, envelopes. There's links to all those that, uh, in the description. So take a look at in there. And then also there's a comment. You can leave a comment on the video. When people leave me comments, I try to reply. I think I've gotten to everyone so far. And I picked these out to do it on the videos. So the first first one I got to share with you is another great video, Mark. Thank you. I like those comments. When you do your listings, do you use any best offer automation? I normally turn off best offer, but eBay seems to be turning offers on. Then I often get lowball offers. Having a newer store, I wasn't sure how declining or ignoring these low offers would affect feedback or growth. I have some test listings where I put in my accept and deny thresholds. I'm just not sure if this is turning potential customers away. So number one, I've heard eBay does that with the offers. I'm not for sure. I, I don't do a lot of best offers, but I've never had that happen to me. But I've heard it so much that I think it is. So no, I don't use best offers on low value cards. Higher value cards, I most likely do. It depends on each card and what I have into it. So I have a set margin that I need to get on the average across. Next comment. Mark, do you work do you have a full-time job as well as reselling? No, I don't. I I was able to retire early a couple about a little under 2 years ago uh, from my position a long-term career as a IT uh, manager for a large, very, very large utility. I was an IT manager for years and I was able to retire early. Before that, I was a field technician. Um, my degree is in electro electronic technology and telecommunications and data communications uh, is my focus. Uh, before that, I was in the restaurant business. We had our own restaurant and I was a, man a district manager for restaurants back in the day as well. But I do not have a full-time job. I do this to supplement for the vacations, buying postcards, something to do. A lot of people think when you retire, you got all this time. No, you don't. You got to find something to do. So I do this uh, reselling postcards as a supplement. Question, comment I got is, I was going to ask how you handled the flea market prices on the back of the cards. Thank you for answering my question. Now I, ha now I don't have to worry about it. I say it a lot in the in the videos because I probably get that question probably the second third question most question I get the first one is what cards sell I the standard answer is all of them if the conditions good uh, the next one 
is what should I sell this card for? What is it worth? And the third one is what do you do with the do you erase stuff on the back of cards? No, I, I leave that up to the collector. Uh, it takes time. You got to have an eraser. You could smudge the cards, just like cleaning antiques. They say never clean antiques because you take the price down. So I show the picture. It's got what it's got on the front. It's got what it's on the back. If they want to take it off, they can do it. I know there's some people that will know how to get the yellowing out of the paper, you know, on the ephemera and stuff. They would rather do it themselves than have me do it. Even on some of the toys, if they're not really dirty and they're older toys, I I will brush you know any standing dirt and wipe them down a little bit, but I won't scrub them down. I leave that to the collector as well. They they prefer to do that. I know I prefer to do that when I get a, a nice action figure or something. I'd rather you know let me take care of that so I don't lose any decals or whatever. So again, that's why I say that in the videos. Make sure you check out our other videos. We're trying on Tuesdays. We put out a short video of the past and present. Uh, views of postcards and what they look like today in real life. We try to go out and find those. And we have a whole catalog. We're starting to get more and more about postcards and videos like this. We try to get these out on Thursday or Friday. And then once in a while, as you'll see, I'll throw a video out there uh, that if I'm starting to get a lot of questions, I'll put out there. And those will normally be colored orange that pop in and out. We thank you for watching and appreciate it.